Hi guys, this is the third video in this series about converting a sprinter from a trashy delivery van into a cozy tiny home. If you watched the last video you might have noticed this part, it is a stand for a 10 litre fuel tank for the diesel heater, built from some leftover material. The idea was to make an easy and flexible solution until we know exactly where we want to place the tank. There is one problem. Only one? Oh wow. Uh, That's good. Problem is we need a fuse. But I thought we have fuses, no? So, we left of in the last video by starting to set up the heater for trying for the first time to sleep in the van. It was minus 5 degrees Celsius outside so we wanted to get this right. We wanted to connect the heater from a spare battery, instead of the main car battery. This way we would remove the risk of not being able to start the car in the morning. I realized that I left the fuses in the workshop so I took a fuse from the car to use temporarily. The electrical wiring of the heater is really simple, it just needs a plus and a minus cable, connected to a 12 volt battery. Later on in the build we will do this wiring more serious with new batteries and a switch in a good location. We are using this heater for two purposes, the first is to heat up the space in the car and the second is to preheat the engine before starting in cold climate, this is because the glow plug module is faulty. Our first night, or I should say day, that we slept in the van was very primitive. We just put the mattress on the floor and covered ourselves with some sleeping bags that a friend gave to us. We had the heater set to a low setting but it was still a little bit too cold during the night. The next day we passed by Canadian Tire and bought a Marine 105 amp hour deep cycle battery for 220 Canadian bucks. Our plan is for our final setup to have two of those batteries but we decided to start with one. We also bought a fire slash carbon monoxide alarm to feel a little bit more safe. Mike at Fire Design said that we could use the printing booth over the weekend from Friday evening to Monday morning. Because of that we had been working like crazy to get the car done in time. Friday came, and of course we were not done. But we decided to move the car into the printing booth and continue with the preparations in there. So start. It's a spray booth. Okay. And let's, uh, you know, that's just going to be just that one motor. It's going to be sucking the air from the inside. Okay. Right? And uh, let me show you. The, uh, we can turn it to summer, and that's no heat. Oh, winter, and that, uh, that's heat. And so the main fan is on. Burner should be on. Should be able to hear the. Shut everything off, mm -hmm. spray, because as you start spraying, a lot of times, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of paint it is and how fast drying it is, you don't want it to dry fast. You want to be able to overlap and make sure that it's, you know, that it's colored and it's all shiny and, and wet looking, right? If, if it's not, you know, you, you got too much air movement and it dries, and okay. you don't want that. You want, you want to be able to spray the whole thing and leave it, uh -huh. and then you can turn it on just momentarily just to get the fumes out. There, there's one there. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta look for the other ones. There's one there. You gotta find mm -hmm. the right diameter, make sure that... Oh, okay. And then blow it out. Oops. Right. So this goes in here like that. The bladder. Mm -hmm. Alright, and a lid. 
she puts the bladder and the lid on, so whatever your mixed paint is, you just, so you basically have this, this kind of deal there. Okay. And, and you can use these little orange plugs. If you're not done with it, you can just mm -hmm. cover it. Perfect. Right? And then you put that on, tighten it, and then you take the gun upside down. You go like that. Until it locks. Mm -hmm. And now you're good to go. And you've got your pressure regulator there. Okay. And this is your fan. And this is your uh, sort of pattern, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that. And, uh, and this is just your, your volume. And your pressure is back here. Sometimes you get a speck. And what I do is I just take it out. Mm -hmm. Make a hair or... Oh, okay. Yeah, like, and it's like you, you spray everything and it's beautiful and then it's like a... Mm, something. You know, bug in the middle or something, see? You can take it out with a fine point and so you just get it out of there. Wow. Now, this is um, aspirin here. Mm -hmm. For your cleaning. It's all filtered. This sticks out the water, this sticks out the particles. Okay. Just, just this hose for the gun and this hose to blow stuff off. It's an oil paint. Yeah, well the, if, it's, if it's an oil paint, you just, you're pretty much just going to build up. Okay. You don't want to put too much at one time. Okay. You want to build up until you see, uh, like at first it's going to look like orange peel, you're going to see stuff through it, and you're going to... But you're going to get, have to get a feel for it on mm -hmm. a vertical surface, how much you can build up until yeah. it starts to run. Mm -hmm. And your final coat, you can go a little heavier. Okay. Just so you get the orange peel out and you can get you know, a mm -hmm. nice smooth mm -hmm. look. But if you need anything, text me. The amount of work that goes into preparing a rusty old car for paint is mind-boggling and it will always feel like you are not quite ready yet. Luckily for us we did have a deadline, the car just had to be done and dry before Monday morning at 6am. Our deadline for starting to paint the car was constantly being pushed forward. We knew that the drying time was 24 hours to fully cured paint so we were definitely stressed to finish the preparations as fast as possible. We were welding rust holes that we found, we applied filler to the body to get a good and even surface and we cut a big square hole in the roof for the ventilation fan. We bought the ventilation fan from Amazon, it's a 12 volt fan especially designed for recreational vehicles. The good thing is that it has a standardized size and the Sprinter van's roof has a flat surface where it can fit perfectly. If you check the description of the video you will find a list with more or less all the parts we have used in the conversion. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you. Baby up with a slow motion crew. And we up in the clouds when people change, but not us. And we just chilling, kicking it, kiss by the sun. Could be soaked to the skin in the mall soon I know she got the good vibes when Seasons change, but we're the same Even if I lost all my money Does it work? And I don't need to speak a single word Cause you got me holding, holding Even if my jokes aren't funny My tongue tied up on it And I don't need to speak a single word <laughs> the time a little
literally flew away for us, we were working day and night during the weekend and only slept for one hour at a time to boost our energy. Sunday, at four in the morning we finally started painting but we instantly run into problems. We couldn't get the paint to float properly out from the gun, we tried to make it thinner by adding a paint thinner, but that only made the paint run instead. We were devastated and exhausted and decided to text Mike and ask for help. While waiting for his response, we decided to go sleep a few hours on our mattress that we had put in a room in the workshop. Two hours later we woke up because Mike was coming into the shop. He told us that he only had one hour before he had to leave again so everything went really fast. He put on some protective clothes and grabbed another gun. Let's try with this gun driven with a pump instead, he said, and we will see if the paint will flow more easily. Luckily it did, and one hour later Mike had left the building and the car was painted. No one was happier than us at that moment. Is this correct? No, 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 left. Mm -hmm. 